Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Here we are at the Accelo Pictures Corporation lot in Hollywood, the movie company which Papa owns, but uh, which apparently is run by Sidney and Harold, his two sons-in-law, whom we find now in Papa's office. Listen. Good night, Harold. Why don't you write the thing out in longhand? It takes you four hours to run off a page that now, way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I'm getting something now. Don't interrupt. Well, we better have something. We're two days behind schedule now. Don't I know it? Now, look. How does this sound to you? The girl comes in after the big fight. What big fight? Oh, do we have to go over all that again? The one she just had with Rodney. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was mixed up. Well, go ahead, then what happened? Well, she had to have an excuse for coming in late. So she pulls the old gag about the car breaking down. That's swell. That'll work. It's always good. Yeah, okay. That fixes the story up okay in that part. Well, wait a minute. There's just one thing you forgot. Oh, don't tell me I forgot something after ruining the tips of my fingers on this typewriter. Just a little detail, dear brother-in-law. Just a mere detail. If the girl went out on horseback, which she does earlier in the picture, how are you going to explain a car breakdown? Well, how'd the horse get into the script? Well, just cantered in earlier in the story. And we can't change it because the scene's been shot already. Oh, why do we have to monkey around with this story when we've got the big costume picture lined up? We have to finish this. Now, think hard. She's got to have a good excuse for coming in that later, otherwise she'll get in bad again with Rodney. That's all this dame's been doing, getting in bad with Rodney. Make it a two-reeler and get them married at the end of the first. Oh, quit clowning and get down to work, Harold. We gotta get this off by four o'clock and it's almost 3.30 now. Why have we got a story department if we're writing this thing? We promised Marcia Vellier we'd change it personally, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll try it again. The car breakdown is out. Car breakdown is out. Of course it's out. It's gotta be out. Let's see now. How can we start this thing going on here? Uh-huh. So maybe I'm in the wrong office, huh? Oh, hello, uh, Pa. No, it's all right. Come on in. Oh, it's all right. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if I sit down? Ah, oh, please, just a minute. Sidney, if I'm not asking too much, why is Harold running a typewriter in my office? Ain't you got offices of your own? Oh, maybe I ain't got an office. We oh. ran into a snag on a story part. It was noisy over on our side of the building. You see, they're putting up a set, so we came over here to work. You don't mind, do you? I don't mind, huh? What good would it do, I'm asking? All right, what's the matter with the story? It's got snags, Pa. It's got snags, he says. It's got snags. And what are snags? Hitches in the plot. It won't gel. Oh, hitches in the plot. It won't gel. <laughs> so now I know exactly as much as I did before I came into my own office and found you here. Oh, I wonder why I hurried through my life. Oh, lunch. please, Pa, I can't think. You can't think. And why did it take you so long to find that out? Now, listen, Pa, this is the story that Marcia Vellier kicked about. If we don't change it, then we're going to have another riot with her on our hands. All right, all right, then change it. That's what we're trying to do. But I'll be darned if we can figure out all the angles. All right, so don't make the picture. That's easy. Okay, Pa, if you want to lose about 8,000 bucks, it's 8, all right. 8,000 bucks. 8,000? I sit in the air. 8,000? Me? What are we waiting for? We've got to sit down and figure this thing out. It Come talks on. easy, but it doesn't work so well when you try to pull out the knots in the story. You see, Pa, she has a fight with her boyfriend. She leaves him in a huff, mad as a wet hen. All right. She grabs a horse and trots off. Then later on, Rodney... Rodney? Rodney? Who's Rodney? Rodney's the boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, Rodney finds out he's been wrong about the whole thing. He tries to find her, but can't. Then he learns that his rival is missing, too. He thinks the girl's gone off with a rival, so he does a burn. So he does a... He does a what? He gets mad, Pa. Now keep it straight, Harold, so Pa can get it. Okay, okay. Rodney gets mad. 
Especially when the girl turns up hours later. All right, if she turns up, why don't the story end there? You don't understand, Pa. The story just can't end there. He has to lose the girl again. Uh, if he found her once, why does he want to lose her again? To make the picture click. To make the picture click, he says. To make the picture click. Things are clicking with me in my head. Don't you see, Pa? It's got to be that way. He falls in love with the girl. She falls in love with him. Then something turns up and they get mad at each other. She goes off in a huff. He finds out he was all wrong. Then she comes back without an excuse for being away so long, and bingo, he suspects her again. All right, and then what do you do? You start the same thing all over again. Well, not exactly. She suspects him the next time. Uh, Harold, you could maybe make it a continued story like in a magazine. They could keep getting mad at each other all the time. You could make a lot of money selling the same thing over and over again. Well, we're getting no place fast here. Mm, if we have to get me. this story out by 4 o'clock, we got to step on it. They're going to shoot the scene tomorrow, and that means this script has to be typed and mimeographed and in the hands of the cast by tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I was getting an idea before... Boy. I keep getting ideas too, Harold, but it's the same idea all the time. The idea that every day I'm going just a little crazier. $8,000 it's costing me because we got to get a girl mad at her boy again. What we need is a swell sequence which actually shows why she stayed away so long. Something that we can put into the picture to let the audience know the girl's okay. Why have we got a, a title department? Let them put something in the beginning of the picture that would tell the people the girl is okay and the beau is a schlamiel like you. Oh, good night, Pa. You're no help at all. Oh, I'm no help at all, huh? Who puts up the money? Now, hold it, hold it. We're not going to get any place this way. What we all want to do is just sit down quietly and start thinking this all thing around. All right, all right. That will sit down, but I can't think being quiet. If we just had a lead. Anything that would start us... Ah, going. I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> the car breaks down. She's on a horse, Pa. All right, the horse breaks down. Oh, now, Pa, that's no way to help. Wait, wait, that is a way to help. That's it, Pa. The horse goes lame. She's way out in the country someplace, and the horse well, goes lame. there's no chance to get a car. We've got something well, there. Whatever it is, you've got a bed. Oh, I bought our business. I got All we have to do is figure out why it takes her so long to get from the country club back to town to the country club. This country club is a new one. <laughs> little by little, I'm finding out what my pictures are supposed to be like. All right, so far, so good. The horse goes lame. She can't ride him back to the country club. Now, where do we go from there? We'll have to get something different. In every other picture, when something like this happens, it's always the same thing. The taxi won't run, the car breaks down, a storm comes up and forces her to run for shelter. Well, why not use them? They're tried and true. Tried, yeah, <laughs> but not true. Oh, gosh, Pa, you're not being any help at all. I ain't supposed to be any help, Sidney. I am only supposed to sit around and sign the checkbook when you come in and tell me that you bought something else, like 200 suits of armor. Yeah, and what about the iron suits? I thought you were going to make a picture with them in it. Now, listen, one thing at a time, Pa, one thing at a time. When we've got this one lined up, then we'll start on the other one. But this comes first. Remember Marcia Vallier. Remember Marcia Vallier. Marcia Vallier. <laughs> Harold, do you think I could be forgetting her when I'm paying her $2,000 a week? I should forget my own name first. <laughs> Which one, Pa? Yasha Blumacup or Jacob Bloom? Sidney, <laughs> you are being very, very close to something terrible happening to you when you mention that name, Yasha Blumacup. Maybe it looks good on paper, but I don't want that I should be called it by my own family, understand me? You sure can get off the track faster than any other three people alive. Where are we? Well, we're still stuck with the girl out in the country and a lame horse. And I'm stuck with this whole thing. I'm leaving. No, no, no. Stick around, Pa. You may be able to help. Harold. Yeah? Read what you've got there already. All of it? Yep. All of it. Okay. Girl goes off in huff, leaves Rodney, comes back late. Go ahead. Where to? There isn't any more. Mm. Oh, and four o'clock keeps getting closer. And eight thousand dollars keeps getting farther away. Oh, gee, Pa, stop talking about the eight thousand. All right, all right. I will sit very quiet and I'll just think about the eight thousand dollars. And when you hear a noise, that will be me still thinking about it. Yeah, somebody, please give me an idea. Mr. Give you a cup and cup around. Hello, oh, Mama. Hello, Mama. Hello, Mama. I'm just dropping in after shopping. Papa, what are you having, a conversion? Mama, the boy this conference, and the boys are having one. I am only over here having a hemorrhage. He's having a hemorrhage? Papa, you shouldn't be talking like that. Uh -huh, you're mad again. I know your face is red. I am not mad. I am just worried. Oh, is something the matter? Oh, look, Ma, we're, we're very busy. We've got to think of an idea and a good one before 4 o'clock, and it's almost that now. Fifteen so. minutes to go. So, are you pinching a clock that you should have something done on the dot? Why do you wait until it's almost time to go home before you're starting to work? Mama, Mama, please, yeah. you don't understand. We've got to get her back to, to, to where Sydney says, and she's got to have an excuse. Jake, you're mixed around, and you're getting me the same way. Now, please, Ma, this is serious. Sure, it's serious. So you should tell me about it. Yes, Sidney, is the cat got your tongue full? Your tongue, Mama, oh, tongue. Yes, Sidney, tell Mama. Well, Ma, I'll just rough over it so you get the idea. So I'll sit down. That's good, Mama, that's good. Sit down, because when you hear it, you'll have to sit down anyway, only faster. Go ahead, Sidney. You can't go ahead when you're giving him intermissions all the time. 
Sidney, tell me. Well, well, it's this way, Mark. The hero, Rodney, gets mad at the girl. They have a fight. What for? They are mad. Papa, I know they're mad. Why should they be having a fight if they ain't mad? What did they have to fight about? Uh, that doesn't matter, Ma. That's not the point. It's simply that we've got to have a good excuse for her to return late. She married? Oh, gosh, no, Ma. Not yet. Then why does she have to have an excuse? Why does... It be... Mom, uh, look, uh, are the stores still open? Mm -hmm. I'll give you the checkbook and you go shopping again, huh? I will get the checkbook later. I you... can't pretend anything. You... Oh. Uh, go ahead, Sidney. I don't know where I was. <laughs> the girl was late. Yeah. Now, why was she late? I am waiting for the answer. It's all giving up. Oh, you still don't ready. understand, Ma. That's as far as we've got. Why she was late is what we want, an excuse. So the audience who watches the picture will know she's okay, on the level. Ah, you want that she should be honest and above board? Board, board, above board. But have you got the idea, Mama? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Sydney, where was the girl? Out in the country, Ma. Well, that's where he is, Sydney. The automobile broke up. Oh, I yeah. the automobile. She was on a horse, and the horse went lame. She can't ride him back to the country club. I'm getting tired of explaining that. And I'm getting tired of hearing that. So, 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 she's in the country. It's nice in the country. So nice that we can't leave her there. Five minutes to four. Five minutes more, and I lose $8,000. So if she's in the country, she should get lost. Well, we thought of that, Ma, but how can she get lost? Well, it's very easy to get lost in the country. So she's taking the wrong road. Taking the wrong road. Hey, now that's something, but why would she do it? Uh-huh, that's easy, Harold. She's taking the wrong road because the signs what show the right roads is point around. Signs turned around. Harold, that's it. We'll shoot a little sequence. The action of the story takes place on Halloween night. You see? Kids turn the signs around for a joke on Halloween night. That's marvelous. Why didn't we come think on, of Come on, come on. Let's go over to the office. We'll dictate the sequence. We're okay. Oh, we'll work out the details on the way over. Ma, ma, you're marvelous. Terrific. Terrific. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. My, you're I'm terrific. Yeah, I remind me. I owe you a kiss for that, ma. <laughs> Mama, Mama, you're wonderful. For two hours, the boys are sitting here without ideas. Then you come in with a very easy thing like mixed up road signs, and you save me $8,000. I'm not wonderful, Papa. You are. You thought of it. I thought of it. Me? Mama, you're talking through your hat. I didn't say a word. You did. <laughs> Papa, 19 years ago, when you're coming home at 3 o'clock in the morning from a pinnacle game, you told me the same story. 